Hello and welcome again to What If Natives One, a video blog and channel about alternate history and American Indians, Native Americans, and indigenous peoples. This is the eighth video of 27 planned ones. My name is Al Carroll. I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I've written mostly about wars, veterans, human rights, and genocide. I'm also, together with Rob Schmidt of Blue Corn Comics, editing and putting out a short story collection, What If Natives Won? This is what this video blog and channel are about. There's a huge lack of alternate history written about American Indians, indigenous peoples. Many people don't like to think about genocides in America or elsewhere. They likely were never taught about them. Many of them don't want to be reminded, or they want to believe these genocides never happened, that it was all an accident. That's what this video blog is all about. I've had great success using alternate history to teach my students and show them that absolutely nothing in history was inevitable. It never had to be. The worst of all human history is always a conscious choice. How things turn out is based on how evil the evil choose to be, and how well and how strongly good people choose to stand up to them or stop them. The way things turned out in history took a very specific set of circumstances. Sometimes history can turn on very small things. Change even one and you have an entirely different history, different present, different society. Today we talk about the other indigenous people of America, Pacific Islanders, in particular Native Hawaiians. What if another nation colonized Hawaii, namely Spain, Russia, or Great Britain? It may be hard to hear this, but we live right now in a dystopian world one of the worst of all possible outcomes for anyone who is not white. America is today 98% non-native. At least 75 million to 112 million natives were killed by not one genocide, but a series of them. There were many of these genocides, the last of them ending only in the year 2000, in America, Brazil, Canada, Guatemala, Argentina, and Mexico. On top of that is massive genocide denial. This is not taught in almost all American schools. There are racist images everywhere that are often not admitted to be racist. This is true for Hawaii too. Most Americans are never taught that Hawaii was taken by force and became a colony. Public schools and textbooks rarely even mention it. American missionaries and businessmen came and took Hawaiian land for plantations. They brought in highly exploited labor, Chinese, Japanese, Puerto Ricans, blacks, Filipinos, and others. White American plantation owners forced the bayonet constitution on Hawaii. No Asians could vote, only wealthy whites. There were literacy tests to block Hawaiians from voting, taken in English, not Hawaiian. When Lulio Kalani became the queen, she called for a new constitution. So an armed, all-white militia of planters working with U.S. Marines overthrew the queen. The U.S. President Cleveland condemned it and refused to annex Hawaii. But he refused to send U.S. troops to fight Americans and re return the monarchy. A Hawaiian counter-revolution failed. The queen was forced into exile. A new U.S. president, McKinley, took Hawaii during the hysteria of the Spanish-American War. The Hawaiian language was banned. The ban wasn't lifted until 1986. Most Hawaiian sacred sites were seized and desecrated. Hawaii became a state in a farcical election where most Hawaiians couldn't vote and U.S. servicemen who were very new residents could. But all this could change if another nation had taken over Hawaii before the U.S. Spanish ships sighted Hawaii bank way back in 1542, but did not land. What if Spain colonized Hawaii sometime between 1542 and the 19th century, before Spain started to lose its empire? Spanish conquest in Hispaniola, Mexico, and elsewhere have been very brutal. In Hispaniola, Columbus killed 98% of the population by war and starvation. In Mexico, Cortes wiped out all the Aztec elites, 30,000 murders in one night. But by 1542, Spain passed the new laws, barring killings unless at war, torture, rape, and greatly limiting forced labor. In both the Philippines and Guam, Spain did conquer and suppress repression and suppress rebellions brutally. But the Philippines today are overwhelmingly Filipino, only a few Spaniards or mixed ancestry mestizos. In Guam also, most people on the island remained indigenous under Spanish rule. So in Hawaii, one would see a Spanish Costas system, like in Latin America, Guam, or the Philippines, with Spaniards at the top, mixed people in the middle, and Hawaiians at the bottom. There would also be a Chinese merchant class, same as in the Philippines and Guam. The good part of this would be no segregation, 
as practiced by white American plantation owners. Hispanic societies mix freely, except for the wealthy. While the Catholic religion would be heavily promoted, Hawaiian traditional beliefs would never be banned. In fact, they would mix with Catholicism. The language and culture would not be outlawed as under the U.S. When would Hawaii gain its independence? Perhaps the U.S. would take it away in the Spanish-American War. Perhaps Japan would seize it before that, and the U.S. would take it from Japan in World War II. It's hard to say if Hawaii remains a colony, thus becomes a state, or becomes independent. But no matter which, Hawaiians would make up a much higher part of the population than they have today, a little under a fourth of Hawaii's people. In the Philippines and Guam, outsiders are under a tenth of the island's permanent residents. A Hawaii that is 90% Hawaiian certainly makes for indigenous victory, Hawaiian victory. In 1814, a Russian agent tried to seize Hawaii by allying with a local chief to overthrow the king, but he failed. How would a Russian takeover be different? How did they historically treat their minorities? In Siberia and Alaska, Tsarist Russia carried out a series of genocides against Siberians and Inuits. In the Caucasus, they committed genocide against Circassians. In Alaska, Russians outright enslaved Inuits. But as in Spain's empire, in Russia, the Orthodox Church tried to, to defend native people from genocide. They advocated for them to the Tsar, set up schools, provided medical care, and tried to preserve the cultures and languages, much like Catholic orders did for Latin American Indians. It's hard to say how much of Hawaiian culture and people would survive Russian conquest. In Alaska, the land remained over 90% native until the U.S. takeover, but on Siberia, much of it today is over 90% Russian. Hawaii would be a different kind of conquest. Rather than the usual fur trade, whaling would be the big industry. When would Hawaii gain its independence? Perhaps Japan seizes it in 1905 during the Russian-Japanese War. Perhaps in 1917 it becomes independent during the Bolshevik Revolution, or Japan, the U.S., or Britain seize it. If Japan takes it, it becomes independent when Japan loses World War II. If Britain takes it, it becomes independent in the 1950s or later. The U.S. could make it a state, or because the seizure was during World War II, it could be free the same as most of Micronesia is today independent nations. The British considered seizing Hawaii in 1874. If they had, a good model of how Hawaiians would be treated are the Maori. British conquest happened pretty late, most of them playing one tribe against the other. No genocides like diseases the English deliberately spread in America and Australia. Maori and other Pacific Islanders are today a fourth of New Zealand's population. They and Asians are on their way to being the majority. The best, of example, the best example of how Hawaii would be once the British leave is Singapore. Under the British it grew in population but was notoriously poor and dangerous. Once independent, it becomes today a first world nation, very prosperous and developed. Its success had nothing to do with British rule. Almost all British colonies were poorer because of the British. Most stayed poor after, but the successful ones became prosperous after colonialism. And once Hawaii becomes independent in the 1950s, it will be primed to be very strategic for world trade. Hawaii is halfway between Asia and North America. When air travel becomes common for average people and not just the wealthy in the 1950s, all those stopovers will be in Hawaii. A prosperous, developed, independent island nation is certainly indigenous victory, Hawaiian victory. This is the end of the eighth video. I look forward to your comments and questions and will answer them as often as I can. Racism, genocide, denial, child's behavior, and personal attacks will get deleted. But I do recognize that some questions will be asked in ignorance because much of the facts I point to are new to most people. They were never taught about this. They've been raised in den denial since denying indigenous genocides is taught in almost all public schools. Next time we will discuss what if Spain colonized what became the southern U.S. Please repost freely, subscribe, like, share, and comment. I will post again in about a week. This has been What If Natives 1 video blog and channel.